we, we are bringing a new technology that can revolutionize the way we build our homes for the future. We are in charge of designing metabolic pathways. This is the first time in which we are applied biotechnology based solution in architecture. We could uh, simulate different ex uh, external conditions that the bacteria is exposed to. We work with nature, not against it. It will be the attempt of uh, incorporating different innovations from diverse uh, scientific fields. And the interior climate is improved. Living architecture changes the relationship between home and environment. Instead of something that is depleting and polluting our world, it is actually reconstituting and adding to it. Humankind is facing incredible challenges, including pollution, global warming, natural resource depletion, waste disposal, loss of biodiversity, and overpopulation. The way we work and live is detrimental to our homes, cities, and the environment. We have to radically change the way we inhabit our planet. Living architecture addresses the global challenges like climate change by inverting the current relationship between buildings and environment. Right now we assume that our buildings are going to damage the environment in some way. We actually have to have buildings that promote environmental enrichment, regeneration, even heal and clean the surrounding um, spaces in which we inhabit. And living architecture is setting out to do that by engaging the processes of organisms, which is very different to the impacts that we can achieve with machines. It is a completely novel approach that microorganisms are integrated in a building to support the supply systems of a building, to generate electricity, clean water, and recover other valuable components from waste, which is produced in the building. The concept of the Living Architecture Project is to use the environmentally reconstituting abilities of organisms to um, help our homes become good for the environment. To develop the project Living Architecture, six partners came together. The University of Newcastle as coordinating partner, the Bristol Bioenergy Centre at the University of the West of England, the CSIC Spanish National Research Council, Liquifer Systems Group, Explora Biotech, and the University of Trento. In the Living Architecture System, Organic waste and water is fed into the system at one end and is processed through a series of smaller bioreactor units to produce clean water, electricity, biomass and phosphate. It consists of three types of integrated and codependent bioreactors. A microbial fuel cell, synthetic microbial consortia and photobioreactors. The generation of electricity and the removal of organic matter from the water is the role of the microbial fuel cell. The microbial fuel cell has got two half cells, the positive cathode and the negative anode. We have bacteria in the negative anode and algae or uh, just open to air for the positive cathode. The bacteria in the anode consume the chemical organic matter, which is their fuel for growth and maintenance, and they excrete electrons or electroactive uh, byproducts which then uh, reach the electrode surface which is inside the chamber. Electrons travel along the electrode surface through a wire to the cathode where they react with protons and oxygen and close the circuit. And we have looked at how well that microbial fuel cell can clean the wastewater, generate clean catholite, which is a disinfectant that comes as a bike product, and produce good levels of electricity. For me, that's, that's the breakthrough. The microbial fuel cell has been integrated in the uh, living architecture wall as a, as a redesigned brick, which has got the anodic chamber for the bacteria. It has got the cathodic chambers for the algae, but it also has additional chambers for the genetically modified organisms. It comes together as a single unit 
and we have several of these. The part of the living architecture system which retrieves the phosphate and polishes the water are the synthetic microbial consortia. A synthetic microbial consortia uh, is a new to nature microbial community when a microorganism that never had lived together are largely engineered to not only live uh, and grow together but also to to perform a very complex biological function that cannot be done by a single microorganism. The overall concept of uh, living architecture synthetic microbial consortia is based in two different um, living models. So the farm model that is composed by uh, cyanobacteria that produce sucrose using CO2 as sunlight. And with this sucrose, we're going to fit the other module, the labor module that is composed by two very well-known bacterial uh, workhorses that uh, produce the functionality of the consortia. This setup makes it possible to engineer several unrelated biological functions, such as phosphate retrieval, within one single bioprocess. To design synthetic microbial consortia, the team has used experimental and computational methods. A computer simulation has been established to model the phosphate metabolism in E. coli bacteria. And these simulation results are then compared with experimental results. And then we interrogate the models to provide response to our problems to understand, for example, how E. coli will respond to different environmental situations. And this way we can understand how we can tune the bacteria by using synthetic promoters so that it will provide the right response that we would like to integrate into the biotechnology which is going to be developed. The first thing we learn is that we have to provide uh, researchers with effective tools to engineer complex pathway. And together with the University of Trento, we completely redesign our computer assisted, assisted design software. And we now are capable to deliver an effective tool to tackle biological complexity. Dulix brings together data, softwares and reagents to allow people to work faster, better and safer to deliver the synthetic biology revolution. Oxygen is brought to the system by the algae in the photobioreactors. The role of the photobioreactor is a little bit like the lungs of the system. It's delivering oxygen into the system when it needs to breathe. It also reminds us that the algae and the plants on this planet are the lungs and we rely on them to live anyway. So we want this to be as low energy as possible. The best way to do it, let gravity do the job for you. You know, the liquid comes down the top, gravity very, very slowly draws it down and it does the work for us. We're using nature. We're not working against it, we're working with nature. The uniqueness is that it combines functionality, practicality, but with an artistic, aesthetic element to it. It's pleasing and it works at the same time. The prototype built by Living Architecture Consortium is uh, controlled by a custom-built uh, electronic circuit whose ultimate goal is to be an autonomous system in terms of electrical energy. The system is comprised by an energy harvester which extracts energy from the wall components and uh, low-power microcontrollers and uh, uh, peripherals that enable the system to be autonomous in terms of energy. The most significant results of the Living Architecture Project are really using household waste as a substrate for producing energy, recycling water and even making useful substances. A wide range of scenarios for applying the Living Architecture system in our homes have been developed. The applications are reflected in our use cases, which we developed for retrofitting of existing buildings but also as design concepts for new buildings, for single-family homes, for multi-family homes, for office buildings and for school buildings. And in addition, we developed a concept design for a multifunctional building in a very dense urban environment. The bioreactor system covers the whole building. It is fully automated and it can be accessed from the general circulation area and we integrated a vertical garden 
for combined socio-ecological impact. The vertical garden enhances the system performance and the interior climate is improved and it offers an interesting place for people to meet, so it promotes social cohesion. Living architecture is a step towards a circular economy. The project demonstrates that organic waste can be separated within the building and transformed on site into valuable resources. Living architecture pioneers the transformation of buildings into regenerative systems. It uses biology to solve critical environmental issues for sustainable and livable cities in the future.